Paul was a prisoner in Rome when he wrote his epistles to the Philippians and Colossians. He told them of his joy and thanksgiving rather than his trials, and said if they prayed to God and trusted in him, they would feel the peace of God that passeth all understanding. In Philippians chapter 1, Paul wrote of his love and gratitude for the saints. He prayed that their love would abound more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, to approve excellent things and be sincere and without offense until the day of Christ. He told how the opposition he faced helped with the gospel work. I would you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened to me have fallen out rather to the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Paul said that Jesus Christ would be magnified through him, and he told of two different ways to preach the gospel. Some preach Christ of contention, envy, and strife, without sincerity, and some preach a better way of goodwill and love. Let your conversation or conduct be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. To you it is given in behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which ye saw in me, and now here to be in me. In Philippians chapter 2, Paul told the saints to be unified. Fulfill my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord in mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than themselves. He said, Let the mind of Christ Jesus be in you, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Paul said that God exalted and gave him a name above every name, and at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, earth, and under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Paul praised the saints for their obedience and told them to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure, keeping his commandments without murmurings and disputings. Paul said the saints shine as lights in the world in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. In Philippians chapter 3, Paul warned the saints to beware of dogs or corrupt teachers who taught converts to adopt Jewish practices such as circumcision, also evil workers and concision or mutilation. The term the circumcision referred to covenant people who worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus. Paul told his own Jewish pedigree. He was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. He was willing to suffer and count the loss of all things, so he could have the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Paul followed after to apprehend or obtain Christ Jesus, forgetting those things which were behind, and reach forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. In Philippians chapter 4, Paul told the saints to stand fast in and be of the same mind in the Lord. They should rejoice in the Lord always, and let their moderation be known unto all men. He said to be careful for nothing, or stop worrying, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. Then the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. 
Paul taught that whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report, if there be any virtue and praise, think on these things. He learned to be content in any state he was, and testified, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Paul told the saints in Colossae to share the letter with those in Laodicea. The Colossians fell into error, believing they were better than others, because they carefully observed external ordinances, denied themselves physical wants, and worshipped angels. He taught that redemption comes only through Jesus Christ, and we are to be wise and serve him. In Colossians chapter 1, Paul told the faithful saints that the gospel brings blessings in the lives of those who accept and live it. He taught of Jesus Christ and prayed they might be filled with the knowledge of his will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, be fruitful in every good work, and increase in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Paul said to give thanks to the Father, who made us partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. All things were created by and for him in heaven and earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, dominions, principalities, or powers. He is before all things, and by him all things exist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. It pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Paul taught why we needed a Redeemer. Having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself, whether they be things in earth or heaven, and you, that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death, to present you holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in his sight. Paul said to stay grounded and settled in the faith, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and was preached to every creature under heaven. In Colossians chapter 2, Paul said we were forgiven through the Savior's atonement, and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened or made alive, together with him having forgiven you all trespasses. He compared the sign nailed on the cross to a sign with all of our sins, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against and contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Paul asked why the saints participated in worldly ordinances and followed doctrines of men even though they had accepted Jesus Christ. Paul said in Colossians chapter 3, If ye be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above and not on the earth. He wanted the saints to know their formal sinful selves had passed away, and they were now to live a new life. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Paul taught that Jesus Christ's atonement made everyone equal, and we should put on the new man, renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. There is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. God's elect should be filled with bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing, and forgiving one another, even as Christ forgave you. And above all, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. These Christ-like attributes are his household code of conduct and should affect our relationships with family and others in unity and peace. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also ye are called in one body, and be thankful. Whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. In Colossians chapter 4, Paul told the saints to be just and equal, continue in prayer, and watch with thanksgiving. 
walk in wisdom toward non-Christians or them that are without, and let their speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, a symbol of purity in harmony with covenants made with the Lord, that ye may know how to answer every man. And this is Philippians and Colossians in the New Testament. Look for hidden images located in the video. You can support PonderFund by visiting our Etsy site, PonderFund.com website, and our Facebook page to find more fun things to do. Please like and share these videos with anyone you think might enjoy them. Also, please subscribe to this PonderFund YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching, and find some time this week to ponder.